So we're going to be talking about the projectile motion PowerPoint. I'm not going to show it, but we are going to talk about it. So in the PowerPoint, they talked about um, the first few uh, terms that they talked about were speed, velocity, and acceleration. And essentially, speed is how far you go over a certain amount of time. So that's things that we're used to that are like, um, if I say 55 miles per hour. So that's a certain distance per a certain amount of time, right? Or if I say 60 meters per second, that's a distance divided by a certain amount of time. So those are both speed, okay? Um, velocity are basically the same thing, but they're going to include a direction. So if, you know, if I say to you um, 55 miles an hour um, northeast, I'm going to give you, so what I'm doing is I'm giving you a speed and I'm giving you a direction. So this would be something that is like velocity. And then the last one is acceleration. And a lot of times what you'll see is the unit has to be squared. And basically what it means is you're either speeding up that much or you're slowing down that much. And a lot of times people, they intermingle, they use the terms um, incorrectly. They'll use acceleration instead of speed or speed instead of acceleration because um, they think they're the same thing. When in reality, they're actually not. They're not the same thing. So um, some things that we're going to talk about, we're going to see um, negative 9.8 meters per second squared. That means for every one second, that object is slowing down. Well, it's it's going downward because the negative tells us that it's going down. It goes downward and it, it's going to increase or decrease speed by 9.8 meters per second. So it's either going to slow down or it's going to speed up depending on the direction. So, and we'll talk about how that works here in a little bit. Another one we're going to talk about is negative 32 feet per second squared. So those are both accelerations. Okay? So if you vision yourself, so you're jumping out of an airplane or you drop a baseball, um, the instant that you drop that baseball, I know it's going to sound weird, but the instant you drop that baseball, you're actually going zero meters per second. So the instant that you drop it, it comes out of your hand, you're not throwing it, you're just dropping it. You're releasing your fingers. The instant you release your fingers, that ball is not moving for a second, for a split second. And then after one second, it's going to increase speed. Well, how fast is it going to increase speed? How fast is it going to accelerate? Well, that depends on the acceleration rate. So for things that we're going to be talking about, we're going to be talking about gravity. And these two numbers right here are gravity numbers. So they're gravity acceleration or gravitational acceleration, which means after one second, one second of time, this baseball is now going 9.8 meters per second because it just sped up that, that rate. After another second, it's going to be speeding up even more. So now it's going to be going 19.6 meters per second. And if you notice, the difference between these two is an increase of 9.8, and between these two is an increase of 9.8. So it speeds up at an acceleration rate of of 9.8 meters per second. <clears throat> now, for gravity, we all know it's going to the center of the Earth, so it's falling. That's why these things are negative. Okay. So that's when, when we talk about the lingo. That's basically what we're talking about. Um, and when we're talking about any of the other th any of the other stuff we're talking about, we're not talking about air resistance. So in any of our formulas, just like simple machines, we don't deal with friction. 
for projectile motion, we don't deal we don't deal with drag or air resistance at all. Um, just because it makes the problem significantly harder. Uh, projectile motion, the stuff that we're going to be touching base on are things that are dealing with projectiles. A, pro a projectile is like a baseball. You throw it, it's only going to get slower from that point on. Once it leaves your hand, it's only going to get slower. A football, same thing. Um, a, you know, like a bullet out of a, f out of a firearm. Uh, once it leaves the, once it leaves the barrel, it's not going to be getting any faster because there is no motor on it. Like a missile, a missile is not a, technically not a projectile because it's got, it has a, a motor on it. It can, it can speed up, it can slow down, it can change directions, it can do all these other things. Um, we're just talking about like you throwing a football. Once you, once you, once it leaves your hand, you have no control over it. The only thing that's really going to be affecting it is gravity and also air resistance. But for our class, we don't deal with air resistance. So we, we just talk about gravity. So these two numbers right here, again, these two numbers are something you're going to have to remember and you're just going to have to get used to knowing. They're the same number. So you might ask, well, they're not the same number because one is 9.8, negative 9.8. The other one is negative 32. Those aren't the same numbers. Well, in reality, they are. The only thing that's different is the unit. So it's basically like me saying that 12 inches is equal to one foot. Well, they're two different units of the same measurement. This is two different units of the same measurement. So you just need to pay attention if it's meters per second squared or feet per second, because that's going to determine which one of those numbers you're going to use. So some of the other formulas, or some of the formulas you're going to see, you're going to see things, and I'm going to switch over here, and Take a look at this. Oops. I guess we're going to get white here, huh? Oh, let's do this. And we'll just fill black. Again, and we'll go from there. Okay, so the formulas that you're going to see, you are going to see things um, that have a couple new things in it. So you're going to see this thing that looks like a zero with a line through it. I usually draw it like that. That is an angle, or also known as theta. So theta is the Greek letter that we're talking about, um, but it's a placeholder. It's a variable for an, for an angle. Okay. Another one you're going to see is initial velocity. Another one you're going to see is x, which is uh, how far the, the projectile flies. So that's the distance horizontally. We'll just put HOR for horizontally. So if this is you and you're going to throw a ball, you throw a football and it goes like that and it lands, let's say, here. This distance from where you let it go all the way to where it land is your x this is your angle and then how fast it's going when it leaves you is your initial velocity <laughs> those are essentially the three um, variables that we're going to be we're going to be dealing with okay we have three formulas because we have three variables we have three formulas those three formulas find those three variables so the first formula that we have is vi equals the square root of negative g, which is gravity, x, which is horizontal distance, over the sine of 2 times theta. Now, 
couple things to note. This is going to be a brand new thing for some of you. You guys have, most of you have never used sine, cosine, and tangent before. It's totally fine. Um, what I need you guys to understand is this. I'm not going to be teaching you what sine and cosine and tangent is or are. I'm going to be teaching you how to use it. Okay? So the conversation of like, what is it? Where does it come from? What does it mean? All that stuff. That's going to happen in your math class. Um, I'm just going to show you how to use it. I'm going to show you how to push the button. Before we do that, we have to make sure our calculators are in on degrees. So if you have like a TI-83 or an 84 or an 89, what you're going to do is you're going to click on mode. And then you're going to find the line that says degree. And right next to it, it might... Oh, wow. Can't spell today. Right next to it, you're going to see the word radian. You need to make sure that your calculator is highlighted on degrees. If it's not, you need to change it. I would encourage each and every one of you to label your calculator to say POE equal degree because we are only going to use degrees in this class. We're never going to use radians. We're not going to get into the conversation as to what is a, what is a radian. Again, we'll save that for your math, for your math class. I'm going to teach you how to use it. So for, from this point on, it's, it's not super difficult. We're going to do a couple problems, and you'll see how this works. Another formula that you're going to have is to solve for x. So if you need to solve for x, what you're going to do is your formula is vi squared sine of 2 theta all over negative g. So that's another formula. And then the last formula we have... Oh, mixed up here give me a second to go back to what I was doing My apologies. There we go. No, nope. that's close enough. Close enough. So, the last one that we're going to look at is when we're solving for angle. So angle equals it's actually two theta equals the sine of the inverse, so inverse sine, we'll talk about where to get that, open parenthesis, negative g, x, and all these formulas come from the, the uh, PowerPoint you guys have already looked at, and you've already taken notes on, so that's our formulas, okay, so we're going to show you how to do this, and I'll do it all on one screen, I'll do one of them all on one screen on this screen, so you guys can see how this works, so let's just... Let's just pretend we're doing this problem right here, the guy throwing the football. So let's say that we know our initial velocity. Our initial velocity is given to us, and we'll say he throws it at 20 meters per second. And we know that the angle that they throw it at is a 42 degree angle. I want to know how far is that ball actually going to go. So what's our x distance? How far is it going to travel? If I'm throwing it that fast, at that angle, how far is it going to go? So, first question always gets asked, which formula do I use? Well, we're looking for x, so we're going to use the one that solves for x. So we're going to do x equals vi squared sine of 2 theta all over negative g. We're going to plug in what we know. So x equals, so our vi is 20. You need to square it. Sine of 2 times our angle. Our angle is 42 divided by negative g. So this is where it gets into play. It's either going to be, remember, negative 
meters per second squared or it's going to be negative 32 feet per second squared. So which one do we use? Well, we look at our units here. So we have meters here. So we're going to use the meter version. So negative times a negative 9.8. So we work our way down and we do 20 squared is 400. Sine 2 times 42 is 84. It's all equal. Uh, negative times a negative is a positive, so we get 9.8 on the denominator. Now, when we do sine. If you look at your calculator, your calculator has three buttons in the middle of it. It's got sine, cosine, and tangent. S-I-N, C-O-S, and T-A-N. We're going to use the sine button. When you click on sine, first, when you click on sine, it's going to tell, it's going to say, it's going to populate the sin or sine, open parenthesis. You're going to put your angle in there or whatever's in there. So in our case, it's going to be 84. So sine of 84, close parenthesis and you should get 0.9945. If you don't, check to make sure you're in degrees, not radians. Again, clicking on mode, checking to make sure your degrees is highlighted. So I get x equals, on the top now, 400 times 0.9945 divided by 9.8. I'm slowly running the space here. Let's see if we can do some. So I'm going to bring this up over here. So I take that 0.9945 and I multiply it by 400 and my numerator is now 397.8 divided by the 9.8 that equals x. So 397.8 divided by 9.8 I get an x distance so this thing is going to travel this ball is going to go 40.59 meters. How do we know it's meters? Because we started with a distance of meters at the beginning. So essentially it's plug and chug. The biggest thing you guys need to learn how to do is do the sine, the cosine, and the tangent. Um, it's just a matter of plugging in a, a button and making sure you're in the right mode. Okay, so we're going to do another, another one, and I'm actually just going to come over here and we will do this. Put it right here. Okay, so let's do another one. Let's say that we are, so we just did x, we just solved for x. Let's try to find vi. So vi, change colors here. So vi equals, we don't know. We have x, which is, let's say, 60 feet per second. And then let's say angle is Oh, I don't know, 30 degrees. So, again, which equation are we going to use? We're going to use the one that solves for VI. So, VI equals the square root of negative G times X over the sine of 2 theta. So we're going to plug in what we know. So which G are we going to use here? Well, if we look at our units here, we have feet. So we're going to use the feet version. So negative times a negative. That's going to change it to a positive once we're done. Our X is, oh, 
shoot, sorry. That's a bad unit. That is not feet per second, that's just feet. My fault. 60. And sine of 2 times 30. All right. Do some substitution and some solving. So negative 32 times a negative is 32 times 60. And this is sine of 2 times 30, again, which is 60. Okay. Come up here. And we'll do 32 times 60. And we get 19... 20 divided by the sine of 60, which is point, I'm going to round it here, but I'm not going to round it in my calculator, 0.866. So when I do the 1920 divided by the 0.866, we are going to get VI There we go. So we're going to get VI equals the square root of two two one seven. VI equals forty seven point zero nine feet per second. Okay, <clears throat> we got one more which we're going to find the angle. So let's do that real quick. Brush size. Okay. And then the last one, again, what we're going to do is we're going to solve for angle. So, this one. Change that brush size again. So VI, we'll say, is um, 600 meters per second. We'll say our X is... Um, 2400 meters and we want to know angle so our equation is 2 theta equals sine negative 1 which means inverse negative G times X over VI squared Okay, we're going to plug in what we know. So 2 theta equals the sine of negative 1. Negative times a negative G. We're dealing with meters here, so we're going to use this one. 9.8 negative times X. X is 2400. And we get VI, so 600, uh, we don't need units, but that's squared. Okay. 
So now we're going to do 2 theta. All right, so a negative times a negative is a positive 9.8. Positive 9.8 times 2,400 is going to be... Twenty three thousand five hundred on the numerator. Oh, I'm sorry, twenty three twenty three thousand five hundred and twenty on the numerator. And then our VI squared is gonna be six hundred. So that's gonna be thirty six three hundred and sixty thousand. Okay, we're going to take those two numbers, so 23, 520, divided by 3606. And what we're going to do is we get two, hang on a second, guys. We get come on. We get two theta equals this inverse sine of point zero six five three three repeating. Okay, so then what we do is, you might be saying to yourself, how do we do the inverse sine? How do we do sine negative one? Well, the second function of the sine button says sine negative one. So if you press the second function key on your calculator, and then you press the sine button, you'll get a, you'll be prompted with sine negative one. You're going to put in your your number there, and we get, at least in my case, which should be yours, we get 3.746. I'm going to round that. So, what do we do then? Well, what we're going to do, oops, sorry about that. What we're going to do is we're going to take that and we are going to divide by 2 now. So take that answer, divide by 2, and we get an angle of 1.87 degrees. So that's basically how to use all the equations. Um, I would encourage you guys to do some practice uh, over the next couple days, couple weeks. Um, but this is a good video that you can always reference back on how to do it, some of the things on how to use the calculator to use the sine function and uh, that kind of stuff to make sure that you're good to go. Alright guys, thanks for watching.